Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian and I'm a structural engineer. We covered arches last time, especially how they were the exact opposite of cables, right? Where an arch is in compression while a cable is in tension. An arch is rigid while a cable is flexible. And arches out there can be really fascinating. When you get an arch such as this, the landscape arch um, over in Monument Valley, Utah, this really inspires us in the way that it spans across a distance. And so to the essence of arches, what we have here is the analogy that was drawn, this was many years ago, it was drawn by Polanyi based on what uh, Robert Hooke established. As hangs the flexible line, and you can see the flexible line here, so stands, but inverted, the opposite, the rigid arch on top. So this is the diagram on the left, the flexible line inverted stands the rigid arch. It's a very powerful idea that has managed to create a lot of structural design and an understanding of structures. On the right, the image actually is um, the analogy of that extended to the dome at St. Peter's with the different weights along the bottom representing the stone that was then to establish the geometry of the dome above. If you want to extend it a little further, and you're someone as genius as uh, Gaudi, then you can hang a whole series of weights in three dimensions, and then track all of that geometry, and invert that to create your structure, your architecture, and your space. This is a model that Gaudi did for a, a particular project, but he used the same analogy and system for the wonderful Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. And I think if you look at this, you can start to see how this sort of form and shape of the inverted arch, the forces flowing down to the ground in the opposite way as a series of hanging string and weights. So let's look in essence. You remember the single cable hung with a single point load at the, at the middle in the bottom, right? That's a shape we're very uh, comfortable with, a V shape. Here is the exact opposite of that for the same weight and the same geometry. It looks a bit odd because we don't really see these kind of structures, but I'm showing this to you so that you understand the concept of the thrust line. This is the opposite of what a cable would do, and we picture those forces traveling in these lines. So let's look at a classic semicircular arch under its own weight. Imagine these are stone blocks, much like the small model I showed you last time. So where is the thrust line in here? Well, it goes around and down. There's little dashed lines that you can just about see. And they all fit within the arch. Notably, not the same as semicircular because you can't get a semicircular cable, right, when you hang weights from it. Right? What you get is, is that kind of dra draped shape of a cable. But that's fitting within the arch and all as well. If we add a weight to the middle, that thrust line slightly changes. Right? Just the same way as a cable hung under its own sort of heavy weight would slightly change if we added a weight down at the middle. Still all good, the thrust line is within the arch. Now, we moved a heavy weight over to the side, that kind of quarter point I showed you last time. And we've got a problem here, right? We've got an arch that is on the verge of collapse or is collapsing. And why? This is the key bit. Why is this happening? And it's happening because the thrust line has left the arch geometry itself. And remember here, this is mimicking what would happen for sort of rigid masonry blocks of an arch, right? Not, not a, a structural material that could carry tension right now. But this goes to the essence of arch behavior. So we have this large weight that is causing a thrust line back to these hands, the hands are always showing the direction that are pushing back, and, it's, and it has left the arch uh, geometry itself, and you can see that, that real long distance between the thrust line and the arch itself is causing the arch to bust outwards this direction, busting out while this is managing to push down, and we saw exactly this behavior in that small model that I showed last time. So let's just make sure we're on the same page I'm showing compression on the top and tension on the bottom, exactly like that original diagram, where uh, 
On the bottom, let's look at a weight to the side of a cable. And that's exactly the shape a cable's going to take, right? You do it with a piece of string. And so you invert that to the thrust line at the top. And you compare that thrust line, the direction the force wants to go in, to the actual geometry of the arch you happen to have. So it is weakest when the thrust line is in a position outside of the material form of the structural geometry. Whereas, interestingly, if you have a symmetric load, such as I'm showing here, on a symmetric semicircular arch, the thrust line is now all inside the arch geometry. It's perfectly stable. And again, going to that analogy with the compression on top and tension on the bottom, you see the shape that a cable takes under two symmetric loads, and that's exactly the opposite of the thrust line that remains in the arch. So let's add a few more weights to the arch. This is getting interesting. We're now getting a smoother uh, thrust line, just like you get a smoother curve to a cable. And again, it's all staying within the arch. This is good. And in fact, if we have no changing loads, if we exactly know the loads that are on our arch, and they're never going to vary, we can thin that arch down to be sort of a pure form aligning with the thrust line itself. So on the one hand, very efficient arch in terms of material usage, an expression of structural uh, form. But on the other hand, this also means it is not so robust against changing forces. And we can drop all these weights because weights are just gravity, right? So they don't have to be at the top of an arch. They could be hung from an arch. And here we have sort of a wonderful arched bridge, right? It's, it's aligned with the, the thrust line. It's pushing against the, the supports, which we show as the hands. And that's kind of a, a bridge deck you could walk or, or cycle or drive across. Um, let's compare that to a classic suspension bridge, right? This is really fascinating. We are here at the sort of basic level of structures and we're already seeing the power of the analogy of opposites in terms of compression and tension, arch and cable. On the bottom, we've got a classic suspension bridge form, right? A parabola, even weights on the horizontal uh, being suspended from that cable. This is the parabola of the cable shape that it forms. Everything's in tension. Whereas if you reverse it, you have exactly the same parabola shape, exactly the same, supporting exactly the same weights, but we have it as compression in the arch as opposed to tension in the cable. So an interesting thing that you can do with arches in a situation like this, because arches push out, you can see those hands are having to push not just up, but in, so all arches that are spanning push outwards on the ground or on their foundations. But you can do an interesting thing with an arch, which is connect it across to the hands themselves. Right? I'll go back and show you this again. It's, it's the only difference is on, if you look bottom left and bottom right over here, that if I connect that horizontal deck to the ends, right like that, go back, right like that again. The end supports, first we're going to look at, are now only vertical. And why is that? Because by connecting the deck across, we can put the deck into tension. It's called a tied arch, right? There's still equilibrium, there's still balance, but all the forces are balanced within the structure itself. It's a great advantage of being able to span those kind of distances. And then we can see an analogy of this actually, in a project I happen to work on, which is the Gateshead Millennium Bridge. I'm very proud of this project. This is the arch during uh, construction and assembly on the site just, just upriver of the final location of this bridge. The Gateshead Millennium Bridge, it's in uh, Gateshead and spans the River Tyne across to Newcastle in the north of England. And what you're seeing here is a steel arch. So this can carry tension and compression, but its form is very much driven by some of the structural forces in it, while also being expressive of the kind of joy of spanning of an arch. Um, out to the end bearings, which are located here, and uh, there's a series of other aspects detailed in there to deal with the thrusts that are taking place. It's an absolutely fantastic, fascinating project. So, where are we? We have covered already in the primary colors of structure I've covered with you guys, we've covered cables, we've covered arches, and we can see the power of that analogy as we build up 
in levels of slight complexity based on the very basic art, uh, basic cable, um, that we can start to see how these structures relate to one another. And that's going to continue as we go forward, right? These are not separate related systems. They all behave in very similar ways. And working from a cable upwards helps us maintain a sort of understanding basis of how all structures work, in fact. So we're going to move on in complexity to the column, the truss, the beam, and then the frame. Which is going to be a very exciting little journey to do with you all, and I look forward to it. So, thank you very much. Hey, if you like this video, why not like and subscribe? Then you'll see the other ones coming up. Ta-da!